I never thought I'd be the man to pay another to follow my wife, but trust had become a luxury I could no longer afford. I couldn't believe it, so I paid a man to follow my pregnant wife, walk down the dark alley of surveillance with me. Every shadow, every secret rendezvous now documented by a stranger's lens becomes part of the narrative that might just end us. Chapter 4 I couldn't believe it, so I paid a man to follow my pregnant wife. It was the kind of morning that had no right to be as ordinary as it was, with the birds chirping away like heralds of a day full of hope. Ironic, considering I was setting out to shatter any semblance of the life I had known. The life we had built, with its cracks papered over by smiles and silence, was about to be laid bare. As I walked the city streets, the grey pavements a mirror to the turmoil inside, I felt the weight of the envelope in my pocket. It was a thick wad of cash, more than I'd ever withdrawn in one go, the price of the truth, or so I hoped. I was buying clarity, though part of me feared the cost would be far more than what I handed over to the private investigator. His office was the same as it had been just days before. Small, too warm, with a buzzing fluorescent light that seemed to flicker in time with my jittery heart. He looked up when I entered, his face giving nothing away. We've started the surveillance, he said, and those words felt like the first domino in a long line, the first step on a path there was no returning from. I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe I was here, couldn't believe I was actually doing this. There was a surreal quality to it all, like I was an actor in some cheap daytime drama. But the script was my life, and the stakes couldn't be higher. I nodded, tried to appear nonchalant as if men like me did this every day. And? I pressed, needing him to fill the silence, to stop the spread of doubt that threatened to consume me. He handed me a folder. We've got preliminary observations, she's sticking to routine mostly, but there are anomalies. His voice was as detached as if he were reading the weather report. Anomalies. The word hung in the air between us. It was a crack in the veneer the first sign of the rot I'd suspected but hadn't wanted to see. The photos inside the folder were a silent movie of my wife's day. There she was, leaving the house, her face neutral, unreadable. There she was, at the café where we used to go on lazy Sunday mornings, her smile now for someone else, and there the anomaly, a figure male too close, his hand on her back in a way that spoke of familiarity, of intimacy. My throat tightened as I looked at that image. The private investigator was talking, something about continuing to monitor, to gather more evidence. But his voice was distant, a drone drowned out by the roaring in my ears. My wife, my beautiful lying wife, with her secrets and her smiles, that weren't for me. I was the fool, the man who had loved too blindly, trusted too deeply. I left his office with the folder, its contents a weight heavier than lead. I couldn't go to work, couldn't pretend that my world wasn't collapsing, so I walked, walked until the city was a blur and the people just part of the background noise. I couldn't believe it, but at the same time I could. The signs had been there, I just hadn't wanted to read them. But now, there was no escaping the truth that was unfolding before my very eyes. I sat on a park bench, the folder on my lap, a monument to my crumbling marriage. I thought about confronting her, demanding answers, but the thought of hearing her confession, her justification, twisted my stomach. No, I needed more, more proof, more evidence, something irrefutable. I needed to know everything before I shattered the illusion of our perfect life. The investigator would keep following her, keep watching, and I would wait, trapped in this limbo of knowing and not knowing, until I had everything I needed to finally face the life I thought I knew. The chapter of my life I thought I was writing had been a fiction, and the truth was a story I wasn't sure I was brave enough to read.